Hey, John, Jason here. Really enjoying your series on fantasy meals and specials at, you know, you know, pubs and specialty brews and all that kind of thing. I do have a question for you. How detailed do you make your pubs before the game? And what things do you roll up during the game? Like, do you come up with the, the menu and, the, you, you know, what they have on the on the bar, the drinks and all that? Do you come up with that before the game? Do you come up with the bartender and, you know, the major, the people that work in the bar? Do you come up with those ahead of the game and then roll up the patrons as people encounter them? Do you come up with all before the game? Or do you roll it up? Do you do it all during the game? I'm, I'm curious, what do you pre-make for a tavern and what do you do on the fly? Thank you. Hi and welcome to the Red Dice Diaries RPG podcast. I'm your host John and before the intro music there we heard from Jason over at Nerds RPG Variety Cast. Highly recommend that podcast, check it out if you've not done so already. And he was asking about how I create taverns and such like in my own games. As Jason has said, I've released a few episodes recently where I've talked about speciality brews and stuff like that. So I think I'd already been sort of thinking about, you know, maybe I should put together a little episode talking about how I do it. And Jason's call in has given me the impetus to finally do that and put it together. So Thank you very much, Jason. Now, before I go on, a little bit of a caveat. Obviously, this is just my way of doing it. And it's all about getting the right amount of prep to make you feel comfortable as a GM. Some people are quite comfortable with doing things off the cuff, making a few notes as they go along, and they can just run stuff like that. Whereas other people prefer to have more stuff written down so they can refer to it during play. Both of those are fine. It's whatever works for you and your game. Now, the way I tend to do it is I sort of design them from the outside inwards. And what I mean by that is I'll start with the things that the player characters are going to see first. So the outside of the building as they travel to the tavern. And then I'll work my way inwards, detailing a few bits and pieces on the inside of the tavern. Because let's face it, First of all, what do you see when you get to the tavern? You see the old creaking sign outside, which normally has some sort of a picture or something similar on that normally links to the name of a tavern. And obviously I'm inspired and influenced by the good old fashioned English pub here because that's pretty much what I know. And certainly over here in England, among the more traditional pubs, you tend to have a sign hung up outside which will have like a little, I suppose, almost like coat of arms on it, and normally the name of the pub. So first thing I come up with is the name of the pub, and that could be as simple as picking a colour and picking an animal, or going for something a little bit more elaborate. There's plenty of random tavern name generators out there if you lack an idea, or you could pick something that has particular meaning in your setting. For instance, in my OSE campaign, Smoke and Snow, the main tavern in the settlement of New Zealand is a tavern called the Hunter and Beetle. And this actually represents a legend about one of the previous player characters, now deceased, who lost his life wading into a temple full of gigantic beetles and getting devoured by them. And instead of having a sign, strictly speaking, to put a bit more flavour on it, I said that it was the sign was actually the carapace of such a giant beetle. And I think a few little touches like that can really add a bit of extra interest to it. And, you know, you get a bit of an in-joke if you refer to something that has occurred in your game. And it's quite nice for the players to see that, you know, their actions and their characters' actions are having an impact on your game world, even if it's something just like a pub sign. Another thing that can be good and that we have over here in UK taverns is a a sort of chalkboard, I suppose you might call it, outside, which has the like today's special, so any special meals or special brews that the tavern landlord is particularly proud of, they can have that written outside. Now, if you're leaning more towards strictly sort of medieval style stuff, a lot of people probably can't read, so they might just be crude pictures or there might not be a board at all. But if you're leaning towards a sort of pseudo medieval D&D where, you know, 
quite a lot of people can actually read then yeah you might have a chalkboard with just some very simple names written on it or something like that what I'll probably tend to do after that is I'll write down a few words to describe the exterior of the building. And I'm not looking to go into massive detail here, just enough to sort of spur my memory and make me comfortable with describing it in a consistent way when the player characters come back to it in future sessions. So things like ramshackle, wooden, tumbling down, upper class, almost derelict, uh, dust strewn stuff like that just a few descriptive words that allow me to sort of like lock what it looks like into my mind's eye then as we sort of progress inside to, on our imaginary tour of this tavern the next thing i tend to look at is the barman or the sort of staff that they're going to interact with because let's face it your characters are probably going in the tavern to either book a room uh, get a pint rest recuperate whatever so i'll write down a little bit about the tavern if he has a wife um, if he has any sort of serving people who i think are going to be a little bit more prominent I'll sort of make a few notes on that. And again, I don't give them full descriptions because by and large, you don't need full combat stats for your in-staff and your innkeeper and stuff like that. If I'm running OSE, the normal human stat line, or at a push, the veteran stat line, if we've got someone slightly more combat capable, will absolutely do. Again, all I'll write down is a few descriptive words and terms about the staff that enable me to represent them consistently and this might be a couple of things about their appearance or any particular character trait they've got so i might describe my innkeeper as fat jolly with a big beard and that instantly makes me think of a sort of father christmas style character and i can represent that and riff on that in the future or i might say he's thin weaselly with a long mustache and that would enable me to portray a very different type of landlord. The players would probably be a bit more suspicious of him. And I'd probably lean into that and make him a little bit more suspicion worthy. After I've dealt with that, I don't really bother detailing out every meal or every speciality brew that the tavern has to offer most times a whatever simple generic list of like tavern fare and um, drinks that your osr clone or your dnd game provides will do absolutely fine however as i've said in the couple of special brews episodes that i've done before it's always nice to have one or two things that make this particular stab, tavern stand out. So like a couple of specialities, meals, drinks, whatever. So I'll write down just a couple of those next. And they're very easy to introduce. When the players rock up to like buy uh, their ale or whatever, you can always have the tavern keeper say, Oh, have you tried the have you tried the giant shrimp? They're on special today. Got them fresh from the shore. Or they can say, Oh, do you want to try a bit of old Knickerbocker's glory? We've only just got it in. Oh, ignore the green scum floating on top of it. That's how you know it's fresh, sir. And you can riff on it like that. And all I really need is a couple of notes about the descriptions and any particular effects they have. And I am good to go with the specials. When it comes to rooms and stuff like that and what's available in that sense, I don't tend to be too strict when i write that down i assume that most taverns in my games unless they're like really small like little village sort of taverns probably have a room or two even if it's a communal room that the player characters can doss down in for a little bit of coin because by and large that's what they are mostly used for once i've got all these details down and like I say you're probably not even taking up a single side of an index card with these details I'll have a look at what I've got written down and I'll see if there's anything that jumps out of me that I think might merit further development. And again, only in like a few words or a couple of short bullet points. So let's take our example of the Weasley barkeep with his sort of like thin gaunt figure and his long droopy moustache. I might have a look through that and think, well, there's a suspicious looking fellow. The, the players are going to be suspicious of him straight off the bat. So I could either go opposite that and have him be like a really charitable guy who maybe like gives money to orphans and stuff like that. Or I could lean into it and say, maybe this tavern is a front for the local thieves guild. 
And from that, I could say, oh, there's a secret hatch in the back room with a secret door leading to a tiny chamber where the Thieves' Guild meet up in privacy away from the eyes of the Watch. And I don't need to write any more than that down. I can always expand on it a little bit later, should the player characters investigate it, and should it be an ongoing part of the game. Whereas, because I've not written down a massive amount of detail, I'm not going to get precious about it. And if the player characters decide not to bother with it, or they don't find the guy suspicious at all, I can either junk that or save it for a different point later and not worry about it. I'm not going to be like, oh man, I spent like hours designing that, and now they're going to just ignore it. Because if you get to that stage, the temptation is always to try and steer the players so they encounter whatever you've planned. And I personally, although I've done it in the past, I'm first whole man's, but I admit, I really don't like doing that in general. I'm more a fan of like sandbox play. I like to just crit, scatter a few things about and then let the players do what the players want. I mean, obviously, there's, I'm not saying they should just run roughshod over everything and do exactly what they want. Obviously, there's consequences and there's game rules and stuff like that. But the decision about where to go, what to investigate and stuff like that, I like to put the ball very much in the player's court rather than me trying to steer them onto particular things. And I find if I've just got a few small details down, as I say, I'm less likely to be precious about it because I'm going to be like, oh, well, it only took me 30 seconds to a minute to create this tavern. Even if the player characters never decide to go there again, it's not like I've wasted loads of time creating something whole cloth that isn't going to get used. So there we are. That's a short episode on how I create a tavern or taverns in my D&D games. Hope that's answered your question, Jason. If you'd like to call in and maybe propose an episode that you'd find interesting or discuss an episode we've already done, maybe just talk about tabletop RPGs, then you can get in touch a number of different ways. You can leave us a message on SpeakPipe or Anchor. There's a link in the description of this show. Or you can send us an email to rddrpgpodcast at gmail.com. Until we see you again, Take care, stay safe, and whatever you're playing, have fun.